it's Rachel and today's project is going to be a collection of three ATCs with a spring flower theme. This was a request to do some ATCs on my channel from um, last week's video. So if you have any ideas and you didn't catch last week's video where I asked people to comment with any ideas they wanted um, me to put on my channel, then feel free to do so on this week's video. I'm starting here working on some hot press watercolour paper. The brand here is Langton. Um, I do prefer a hot press watercolour paper for most applications rather than the um, rougher, more textured finishes. I've chosen to use Distress Inks here. The first colour is Stormy Sky and I've sponged this down the left hand side of the background using a piece of Ranger cut and dry foam. And now I'm using a water brush, firstly to activate the ink that's been put onto the ATC and then to pick up some additional ink, as you can see here, to create a mottled effect onto the background. So this is quite subtle, um, but it is a good way to add some interest. And then finally, I'm adding some splatters just by diluting that ink and splashing it on by tapping the end of my water brush. Once I've done this, um, I'm using a collection of die cuts by Gumiapan. This is a Swedish company that I've mentioned before. Um, I will put a link to that company in the video description. Um, they are an exceptionally good company in terms of the quality of the die cuts and also how fast they ship them out as well. So highly recommended and I have actually placed a recent order with Gumiapan so if you're interested in seeing what I bought um, do let me know and I'm more than happy to do a little haul video on those. So this first flower is a snowdrop you get two snowdrops in the die set but um, one of them I've cut twice so I've got three in total because most um, art projects do look better with odd numbers of elements so three five seven etc. Again, I'm using my water brush. This one is by Kuritaki, I think, um, to add colour. And the distressed colours that I've chosen here, I've started with uh, Shabby Shutters, which is the light green that I put all over the stem and the leaves to begin with. And then I'm just creating some darker shadow areas using some peeled paint distress ink. And this is a, a very easy way to add water and create watercolour images. Something so tiny as this, you don't need to be overly concerned with where the shadows might go. Um, so I know that is one thing that puts people off and makes people feel a little, little anxious about tackling watercolour. Um, but really, you know, just look for the areas where light wouldn't hit and there's going to be a, your shadow colours so under the top of the snowdrop the flower bends over between where the leaf hits the stem and towards the base of the um, die cut as well and gummy pan do give you those cut lines within the die cut where natural shadows would fall so obviously snowdrops are white um, but to create a little shadow on there I've chosen to use um, weathered wood which is a grey toned blue and just adding a small amount of this is going to create some shadow area as well maintaining the appearance that those flowers are still white. Now I'm adding some stamping to the background this is a very tiny text stamp by Kaiser Craft it's called Dictionary Meanings and I'm using the same ink that I created the background with here. So it's the Stormy Sky Distress Ink. And all these are the original Distress Inks, not the Oxide Inks that I'm using today. And now I'm ready to add the snowdrops to my design. So I play around with them on the ATC until I'm happy with where they are. And I'm using some Art Institute glue to initially adhere the snowdrops to each other and then I can place them where I'd like them onto the ATC. So this is quite a forgiving glue. You've got a few minutes to um, move your elements around, which is one of the reasons I chose to use it. And also it's got a very fine tip on it. Um, 
I believe it's a similar type of product to the Barely Glue, which it is beginning to be available in the UK, but I probably won't invest in it. I know a lot of people are using it. I may try it one day, but I've used this Art Institute glitter, for, uh, glitter glue for years and years. Um, so I'm just going to stick with that for now. It's very readily available here. And I think it costs um, less than the Barely Glue. Just to finish off, I decided that the die cut needed grounding. Um, so I've gone back to the Stormy Sky Distress ink and the water brush just to create that little bit of ground. And finally, framing or finishing off the ATC with some ink around the edges. Again, the same colour, the Stormy Sky being applied with a piece of Ranger cut and dry foam. For the next ATC, I'm sticking to the same kind of method. I want these ATCs to be a set, so they're going to be very similar in appearance. Uh, I am using different colours, however. So this time for the background, I'm using tumbled glass. Uh, the last one had stormy sky, so this ink is a little brighter. And I chose this because I wanted the one with the snowdrops to be a little more muted in the colours because it's a January flower where here in the UK at least it, it's quite bleak, it's very grey and rainy and cold in January. Um, when the daffodils come out it's more kind of March time, it's a little brighter so I wanted to reflect that in the colours that I used on the background as well as for the um, flowers that I'm going to use here. So same procedure as before and application of the ink, just sponging it all over the background to begin with, then wetting that ink, adding some mottling to it, and finally some splatters. Now here are the tiny daffodils, again by Gumia Pan. Um, you can see why I love this brand, they're so tiny and so detailed, and an excellent size for many applications. I've used these in a lot of my card making projects and obviously very well suited to ATCs. Again, I've changed the colours on the stem, so this time I'm using Twisted Citron for the base colour, and the darker colour here is Mowed Lawn. And exactly the same application of ink as before, just using the water brush, creating some light and dark areas to give the illusion of shadows, but not really paint, you know, too much attention because there's such tiny stems on those flowers and for the flowers themselves I'm using a few different inks here so I started off with a base layer of squeezed lemonade and that is being applied all over each of the tiny daffodils um, and then I go on to a layer of wild honey um, just to create some variation in the colours um, and might add this set as well um, you get two die cuts in the set so you've got the left facing daffodil and the one that's more front facing and I chose to cut two of the front facing daffodil for this particular ATC and once I've finished with the petal area I've chosen some additional inks um, for the trumpet of the daffodils uh, so, what colours did I choose here? Um, spiced Marmalade is one of them. I think actually I start with a bit more Wild Honey and then go to um, the Spiced Marmalade. And then I have a final colour, a much deeper colour, which is Ripe Persimmon for the very centre of that trumpet. So, I just tend to add the inks a little at a time, darkening them up where I want them. Uh, there's no sense going in really dark straight away because it's quite difficult then to try and remove that ink. And I transfer a little bit of those colours onto the petals as well. Almost um, like shadow colours. And here you can see the ripe persimmon in the centre. And just spreading that ink around a little bit. So a little of the what ripe persimmon goes into the actual trumpet as well as the um, inside of it, the outside of the trumpet as well as the inside. 
and a little more shadowing onto the petals. And this one again is complete. So back to stamping. Uh, this is a tiny grid stamp this time. Again, using the same ink as I used um, on the background originally. This little tiny grid is one of the Prima clear stamps. I'm not sure if this one is still available, but there are lots of manufacturers that put out these little grid designs for use in mixed media and other craft projects. And now to arrange my daffodils onto the ATC. So just playing around here with how I wanted them. I was going to put them all three very close together, but then I quite liked this arrangement of having the left facing daffodil standing alone and then the other two kind of stacked more closely towards each other. I'm just using a pair of tweezers here to help with this application because those stems are very delicate um, and it would be quite difficult to pick those up with the glue onto them um, yeah without getting it all over your fingers and transferring it all onto your fingers rather than leaving it on the daffodils and obviously I didn't want to bend the stems either that's um, another risk with these tiny little die cut shapes so just laying that down give it a little press this glue is fairly strong so you don't really need to put any weight on it or anything like that and then the last step I wanted to ground this one as well in a slightly different way a more loose um, abstract way just giving that little depth of colour there um, makes it appear a little more finished and then the very finishing step is to go around the edges with that cut and dry foam in the tumbled glass colour again just to frame everything and finish it off nicely so that's the second one and uh, they're all not quite done there's a another element to add at the end but at this stage I wasn't really sure how I was going to finish them off I knew I wanted to add a little bit of something to them um, so I continued until the three were at the same stage and then decided what I wanted to add so on the third one here um, I'm using salvage patina for the um, background so this is a slightly more green toned blue but still in keeping with the um, colours of the other two ATCs and same procedure just sponge it on dampen it with the water brush to move the colour and then picking up some ink to add a little bit of mottling on it and then the splatters that just create more of more movement on the piece really and a little bit more interest very in keeping with a lot of um, watercolour styles and these ones are grape hyacinths um, again you get two if you look closely you'll see that they've got a little piece missing out of them and two are the same um, on one it's on the opposite side and you get the leaves separately um, I think you get two leaves facing opposite directions for this set and again I've chosen different inks for this set um, hmm, I know that one of them is pine needles I will put a full list in the video description because um, I did make note of which inks they are one is pine needles the other one escapes me right now possibly oh evergreen bow that was it pine needles and evergreen bow with the two that I used here um, and same procedure as before I did I did want to show everyone rather than just um, cutting it out I know if you're experienced then you know you might want to fast fast forward through some parts but if you're not experienced it is good to see these things so to color the grape hyacinths I've got three different purple shades of distress ink this first one here is shaded lilac and then I add a little bit of Dusty Concord, which is a much warmer purple. And then um, the third colour is actually blue. It's blue, uh, Blueprint Sketch for the third one. Um, just because this particular flower does have different shades of blue and purple when you see it. Um, and I think it looks better anyway. 
Again, I'm using a Prima Clear stamp. This is a, a script stamp and using the salvage patina for this in keeping with the others the same background colour is being applied um, with the stamp image and finally to arrange these ones so these ones are a little more tricky because the leaves are separate um, that's not a bad thing I think that's quite an advantage if you wanted to put these particular flowers in a vase or something like that I did toy with the idea of putting them in pots rather than grounding them but I just decided in the end I wanted a more botanical feel to these ATCs um, and they are all wildflowers so or they can be wildflowers I know um, I have um, certainly snowdrops and daffodils growing wildly where I live I'm not too sure about grape hyacinths actually whether they grow wildly but I'm sure I'm sure they do somewhere but yeah, I wanted the, the more botanical appearance, so I didn't put them in pots um, for this one. I may do a, a journal page at some point with little potted flowers, because I do have a lot from Gumia Pan, um, and that might be quite a fun project to do. And the next step here would be just to add the grounding again. And this time I chose to use... Um, a little bit of the salvage patina but also there was also a little bit of the blue and purple colours on my brush and at first I kind of washed them out of my brush on my craft mat and then I thought they would actually look quite nice as a, another element of those colours on, to, on the ATC so I started to pick up the um, inks that I'd actually washed off my brush now um so my finishing touch i just decided to put the names of the flowers on there and i've used my brother label maker here with six mil tape and i added a layer of a golden matte median and that is going to create a ground over which i can put ink um without that it's a glossy appearance it's very slick it's not going to take any inks at all um well actually it would take archival ink because that's permanent but it certainly wouldn't take distress ink very well uh so that's what i did i added the matte medium let it dry and then sponged over coordinating colors so for the snowdrop one i used the shabby shutters which is one of the colors from the stems um i could have chosen the weathered wood but I really didn't think that I'd add much contrast um, but it is the only colour that I applied to the flowers the other two I'm using colours from the flowers so this one is the um, lilac colour and then for the daffodils it was the wild honey and just using the tweezers to put them down I've lined them up in more or less the same place and that's it they're all finished so i hope you enjoyed this today um i really like these understated kind of botanical feel projects um let me know if you do and if you want a full product list with all the colors and things like that and a link to gummy pan please look in the um video description um, there's also links to my social media, my Etsy shop, and if you fancy donating to my channel, I'm always grateful if you buy me a coffee. Alright, that's everything for today. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.